Hey everybody. So since we're going to be starting something new, I figured um, putting together a little video as if we were in class together might make it a little easier to understand. So this presentation um, is about molar ratios and molar ratios refer to these numbers in front of, in this case, a compound, which is aluminum oxide. Um, and, or these elements. So we have aluminum and oxygen over here. So these numbers are called coefficients. And what it means is I have two aluminum oxides. I have four aluminums and I have three oxygen compounds. So I like to think of these numbers um, sort of like a recipe. So for every two aluminum oxides I put into this reaction, I get four aluminums and I get three oxygen compounds. So think of it like a recipe, like I said. So if you were baking bread, you would need a certain amount of flour, a certain number of eggs, a certain amount of yeast, you know, like four cups of flour, two eggs, and a tablespoon of yeast. So that's what these really are. It's like an ingredients list. So I need two of these, and from that I'm gonna get four aluminums and three oxygen compounds. So going back to the recipe thing, if you put all those things together to make your bread, you're gonna end up with bread. So these show me a ratio. Um, so I can read a sentence like this, two moles of aluminum oxide decompose, that means breaks down, into four moles of aluminum and three moles of oxygen. So the molar ratio then is for every two aluminum oxides, I get four aluminums and three oxygens. So these numbers are what they are, it's a balanced equation, and that will be very helpful when we go back and forth between one element um, and another. So you can look at this as how many moles of aluminum might be produced when, for in this case, we want to cut the number of aluminum oxide in half. So think back to a recipe. If you didn't want to make, you know, five loaves of bread and you just wanted to make two and a half loaves of bread or, you know, 10 loaves of bread and you only wanted to make five, you'd have to cut the recipe in half. Well, that's what this is saying. It's saying if we have one mole of aluminum oxide, how much aluminum will we get from that? So one mole is half of two. So if we cut the number of aluminum oxide compounds in half, then these other numbers are also going to be cut in half. So this number will drop to 2, and this number will drop to 1.5. So how many moles of aluminum will be produced when you have one mole of aluminum oxide? Then you'll have two moles of aluminum. These numbers just cut in half. The whole thing cuts in half. Let's say you wanted to double a recipe. So let's say we, want, we wanted to double this recipe. What if we put four moles of aluminum oxide in? Well, that means these other numbers are going to double too. So if we put four moles of aluminum oxide in, we're going to get eight moles of aluminum and six moles of oxygen. So what if we wanted to cut the recipe down to a quarter of the amount? So if we take two and we cut it down to half, that's cutting it down to a quarter of it, then these other numbers will cut down by a quarter. So four will drop down to one. And one if we wanted to do some funky number like 3.5 moles, well, there's a mathematical way to figure that out. Um, and I'm going to show you that. But in this case, if you put 3.5 moles of aluminum oxide into this reaction, then you'll get seven moles of aluminum. So let's take a look at how we can do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to use molar ratios to convert from one compound or element to another. So these numbers right in front, they're going to be right in your equation. You don't have to find them on the periodic table. They'll be right in your equation. So let's take a look at a couple examples. So we're still going with the aluminum oxide um, decomposure um, into aluminum and oxygen. So let's say you're asked how many moles of aluminum will be produced if you have 1.7 moles of aluminum oxide going into this recipe. So I'd start by writing my 1.7 moles of aluminum oxide, and I've got to find the conversion factor that will help me figure out the relationship between aluminum oxide and aluminum. And that's right there, those conversion fat, uh, those coefficients, the blue numbers. So for every two moles of aluminum oxide, I get four moles of aluminum. Why is moles of aluminum oxide on the bottom in your conversion factor? Because you need moles of aluminum oxide to cancel. Remember, this is the unit um, that you have. So we need moles of aluminum oxide to cancel. This is the unit that I want, which is moles of aluminum. So moles of aluminum oxide will cancel. I'll have moles of aluminum on the top, and that's what I'm being asked to find. I'm being asked, if I have 1.7 moles of aluminum oxide going in, how many moles of aluminum do I get? So then I'd punch it in my calculator. Now, me, I like to do the brackets, so I'd have that long line with the you know vertical bar there. So in my calculator, I would put 1.7 times 4, divided by two, and I'll get 3.4 moles of aluminum. Or you could punch it in exactly as you see it here with brackets around, you know, uh, parentheses around near four over two, which is just two. So it's really 1.7 times two. 
Well, that'll be 3.4 moles of aluminum. Here's another example. How many moles of oxygen compound will be produced when 0.23 moles of aluminum oxide decompose? So we're starting with 0.23 moles of aluminum oxide. We're being asked to put it into moles of aluminum, uh, moles of oxygen, sorry. So you have 0.23 moles of aluminum oxide. You can have moles of aluminum oxide on the bottom. But this time we're going to have the relationship between aluminum oxide and oxygen. So there's your relationship between aluminum oxide and oxygen. It's a 2 to 3 ratio. You have two aluminum oxides going in and you get three oxygens coming out. So moles of aluminum oxide will cancel it's on the bottom. So you'd have 0.23. Again, if I was doing my brackets, I'd have 0.23 times 3 divided by 2. Or again, you can use parentheses and punch it in exactly as you see it here. And you get 0.345 moles of oxygen. So think of this as a recipe, as if you were doubling or cutting in half. Um, these aren't as easy numbers to work with, so we do need that conversion factor to help us do that and get those numbers. Um, I am going to give you a practice sheet, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a separate video um, and walk you through how to do numbers one and three on that worksheet. Um, so that should help you figure this out a little bit. These are crucial. These um, molar ratios are crucial to being able to do the next step in these stoichiometry um, equations. So definitely make sure you're paying attention to these um, and you understand where to get these numbers, um, which is just right from your equation. You're looking at going from aluminum oxide to a totally different um, compound, or in this case, element. And you can do that using these uh, ratios, these relationships here. So stay tuned for um, the other video.